Hello, and we're going to do another cigar review today. This is Living Simply and Fun Cigar Reviews, and we are going to be reviewing, oh, 601 La Bamba, eh, not La Bamba, the 601 Green Label. Every time I hear 601, I think La Bamba, because that was their big one, and we did review that, so. Um, I just got a question. I brought a glass out here. Where'd it go? Uh, you did not. You only brought this glass. Uh, so, anyways, this is the 601 Reserva Limitada Oscuro. And uh, last month, uh, I kind of saw some Oscuros, and I really wanted to try some Oscuros. And uh, we've tried most of the Oscuros on the market, but now I'm finding more and more. And so, it's like, wow, it seems that they're using this more. So, uh, still it's looking good. for good Oscuro cigars. I think the first Oscuro I had was a Partigas, and I think that was the first Oscuro on the market, wasn't it? No, I think there was a couple that were before that. But... Uh, among my favorite Oscuros is the Partagas Oscuro. That was absolutely fantastic. And I just want to say for you all, I don't drink that much anymore thanks to Aaron keeping me a tight lid. But I will be sampling it with a little old Forester. And I have something to say. I did some research on this. Aaron usually thinks I'm stupid when it comes to booze. And uh, I did some research. Get this. This was bottled, started bottled in around 1870. The guy that invented this named it after a doctor friend of his who ran a pharmacy. The funny thing about this was it's the first whiskey that was ever bottled in America. Really? Grant. And you ready for this? This is the only whiskey that has the 140 year lineage. Every other whiskey does not have the lineage of being sold completely through. Meaning that when you get your Jack Daniels, your Jim Beam, etc., you like to right, you, you right. might like this history lesson. This is the only whiskey during Prohibition that was sold as a medicinal in a pharmacy. So they got away with it as medicinal use only, hmm. <laughs> and that is the only one well, that survived it. So it managed to go during Prohibition. Yes, as a medicinal, and and the FDA or whatever company. Oh, that was probably more than likely uh, underhanded where the politicians were like, oh, yes, I'll take my medicine. <laughs> While everybody else is sitting there, where's our booze? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. So here we got this Oscuro, and uh, we're going to fire this thing up soon. It has a hay earth smell to the wrapper. I agree, haters. And a slight sweetness off the foot. Very typical of many cigars to have those two. It's got a sweet, yes. The foot is... Sweet. But otherwise, mostly hair. The foot has a slight cocoa taste to it. Taste? What, you licked it? No. I got a frog you can lick. <laughs> and... Uh, It's got a, a light floral hint for a dry puff. Yeah, I noticed that. You do you dry puff too? Mm-hmm. While I was uh, testing out the draws. Little pepper right off the beginning, but it's not the primary flavor. Well, I want to thank uh, Aaron for this wonderful cigar that uh, he donated to me for this review. Some kind of nutmeg-like spice. Oh, the, the notes on this. Uh, this is a Nicaraguan Habano Oscuro wrapper with Cuban seed Nicaraguan long filler. It had a 90 rating, and this is the 5x50 Tronco, which goes for about $7 a stick. Now, I kind of like sometimes when cigars have names for the Vitola, like the 601 Green Label Tronco, uh, uh, which uh, it's just another way of saying Robusto. They just named their Vitola, the Flathead, what we had earlier, the Carb, uh, for a 6x60 big block for the 7x70. Uh, I, I like things like that. That's kind of fun. Or like uh, one of my favorite cigars, thanks to Johnny Sticks. Hey, Johnny Sticks, thanks for all you've done for us. The... Um, 
the log. Now, the, the 5 by 60 is called the stump. The 6 by 60, or the 5 the by 70 is called the stump. The 6 by 70 is called the the tree and the uh, uh, the or the log and the seven by or the, the seven by seventy is called the tree. So I guess sometimes those two are you know. And um, another thing is uh, just in brief passing here, uh, the cigar bomb my son out last week ended up touching down today and wasted somebody's mailbox yet again. So that was a lot of fun. I want to say there is one construction error on the cap, and that is what I was wondering. At first, I thought it was the label. The cap is being air cut it, and because of it, it's coming undone right there. Oh, and it shouldn't from where I cut it. Uh, also, I noticed a couple things in here is there is a lot of veins for the leaf. Uh, it's very veiny tobacco. Uh, the seams are very noticeable. Um, it doesn't look like a pretty old cigar, but was I found out it doesn't have to be pretty to taste good. However, one of the worst looking cigars I ever had was at Trader Jack's, uh, which we, so just, came up. we he, just saw the other day. Just, who, that's no noise. You uh, oh, it's a J.C. Newman. That's right. Uh, and they're like a dollar a stick at one of my B&M's, the one in Moses, which we don't get to as often. Uh, Is that the one they put in this glass jar? Yeah, that's the one that comes like beef jerky. Uh, they got them in little plastic bags, and then they take them and they put them in that little humi jar thing, and you pull them up and pull them out like a stick of beef jerky. This is very tasty. I'm getting toasted cedar, good smoke output. Kind of a marshmallow flavor that's uh, mellowing the whole smoke out. Uh, which is kind of nice, but there's also the spice that lingers on the back of the tongue. Exactly, top. exactly. The marshmallow, I can completely concur with him, and there is light spice on this uh, stick. The only reason I say marshmallow is there's something semi-creamy that's just a little sweet that's kind of mellowing everything else. I would say this making is a sweet very nice, cream, is what I would say. It's making cream. a very nice marriage of the flavors. Exactly. A I So far, I've been very pleased with the 601 cigars. This is the fourth one we've reviewed. We like the Steel Rod, uh, which was another Oscuro. Uh, we like the Blue Label, and uh, we also were uh, quite keen on the La Bamba, too. And exactly. uh, we got the Red Label to go after this. So. And the Red Label is an Oscuro, too, I see? No, it is not. I don't have the notes on that one in front of me. <laughs> I don't need it right now. This is just a fine cigar. It's got light, a light pepper hint, uh, you know, premium. And I was trying to find something quick to smoke because before 8 I want to walk the dogs. It was already like 6 o'clock and I was like, hey, let's have a cigar after dinner. And I got a call to make, so uh, I figure we'd uh, get this out of the way and be able to have time for everything we need to do. Uh, nice little reboost out here. I thought you would like the little history of that. I've been trying to get yeah. around to saying that about the whiskey. That is actually a cool history, and I do like history of things. And I was looking up information on it with um, with uh, Wikipedia, oh. and Wikipedia said all that. You know, I so. forgot to mention this about the 601. Uh, it was blended by Eric... Uh, Espinosa and Eddie Ortega uh, and Don Pepin Garcia. It was a three-way combination and it was originally uh, rolled and blended in Pepin's own uh, uh, factories before Eric Espinosa left uh, for EO e Cigars and then, well, it was actually a combination. Before him and Eddie Ortega broke up, is what I should say. And Eric Espinosa went to Lizona Cigars. Now the 601s are rolled in the Lizona factory uh, instead of at the Pepin Garcia factory. So 
Um, a little interesting thing there. Um, I don't know what else to say about it right now. There was something else I wanted to say. Apparently, I can't remember what whiskey it is, so don't quote me. But apparently there was a whiskey out there on the market that is an American brand, but it is only sold outside the country. I think it was Four Roses or something. Uh, no, because uh, I've seen where Four Roses is sold. But it's very hard for us to find Four Roses around here. Yeah, well, I think there might be Four Roses over at the... I think the liquor barn has Four Roses. Yeah, I don't condone going to the liquor barn. Yes, if you're a child, please turn this channel off. We don't condone <laughs> you smoking or drinking. <laughs> I don't condone it myself. But, you know, it wouldn't have stopped me from watching. That's why I laughed. Uh, as a child, uh, I, I liked... Uh, I, I was into cigarettes, of course, but I was also into beer. I didn't really care so much about hard liquor and didn't care about cigars. I think my first cigar I was like 17, though, so I was still a minor, but I didn't really like my first cigar as far as I remember it. Uh, that's why I don't consider my first cigar until a few years later when I got a hold of some Partigas uh, crystal tubes. Yeah. And then some Macanudo Portofinos, and then uh, uh, Cohiba Red Dots, I think. Was the Cohiba other. Red Dots stinks. I oh, used to like um, them back then, but I can't stand them now. I, I wanted to say the, um, the uh, what, what's those ones? The, Pan, the Pantellas, is it? The ones that are the thin ones? Uh, Lancero's Pantellas. Yeah, the uh, Portofino is more of a Lancero. It's like 6 by 46 or 47, mm -hmm. but it's still a good smoke. Of course, I lost my one of my Portofinos to TSA about 10 years ago, and it yeah, pissed me off. that was a shame. Anyways, we'll get to you in the halfway point of this and let you know how it's progressed. See you in a second. Hello, and welcome back to the halfway point of the 601 Reserva Limitada Oscuro Green Label, or better known uh, as the 601 Green Label. And go! Now that was a bitter drink face. <laughs> Are you all right there? Yes, dear, I'm fine. <laughs> ah, that's one reason I don't drink. So, anyways, this has a good amount of slight peppery spice to it, uh, along with some leather notes, uh, maybe a little bit of nuttiness and some cedar. And uh, there's a, uh, well, it's mostly peppery spice. And something I failed to mention during the first part is this is considered the fullest bodied cigar by the 601 company. And it's considered one of the fullest bodied cigars on the market. Now, I can't necessarily agree with it being the fullest bodied I've ever had, but it's pretty darn close. Um, And you were texting. Uh, I think this is a mild-bodied cigar. <laughs> Whoa! From full to mild, huh? It's been mild the entire time. Well, there you have it. I think it's full. Rita thinks it's mild. Therefore, maybe we got two different cigars with the same label. Talking about something for a second in this half. Me and Aaron stumbled across something we didn't know was existing. The new movie, Inferno, what's really good with Tom Hanks, reprising his role from The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons. Which I happen to like that series quite a bit. So, I look forward to this new one. Um, I just like seeing... Uh, to me, the character is based off of something that I sometimes feel. I sometimes pick up that I noticed this or that that other people wouldn't notice. So The new Ta uh, Mission Impossible movie looked pretty good, too. Which, I'm not really into Mission Impossible, but they look pretty good. So... Lots of smoke output. Lots of smoke output. Very good uh, burn. It's been pretty much on a razor. I have not needed a fix. Yep. Uh, I have one little canoe tunnel thing, but... It's probably operator error while I was uh, watching uh, some, you know, YouTube vids. 
Uh, I do want to say to our subscribers out there, just so you uh, understand, including you, Johnny Sticks, if you're religious or not religious, check out the Terminator parody. That thing makes me laugh. Oh, that, that, that <laughs> Don't is, worry, he'll be back. <laughs> that is totally sacrilegious, but <laughs> it was also funny. It's essentially a parody of what Don't would happen say. if the Terminator came back and tried to save Jesus. Uh, Anyways, that was a continue? cross between the Terminator movie that came out that year and the greatest story ever told, uh, and they sandwiched them so together. So can well. uh, we wait till the final? Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. please stay tuned for the final, uh, the final part of this video. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to the final third of this. 601 Green Label, the Obscura. <sighs> First, I want to note that there's quite a bit of cedar notes in the final third here. Uh, it kind of has a strength flavor, semi to clove, but without any clove flavor. It does numb the tip of the tongue quite a bit. And my, my tongue is numb. The other thing is that this cigar is so full of heavy in its flavor that when I swallow, I can feel the flavor going down my throat, basically. And I've never really had that happen with another cigar. Uh, I do consider this, from what I've had of this, to be one of the fullest bodied cigars that I've ever had, although it is not extremely nicotine rich. And uh, if you love full bodied cigars, I'd say give it a try. Uh, it might even be too full-bodied for you if you do love full-bodied cigars. Uh, if you do not like full-bodied, stay away from this, is what I would say. Rita? Again, I'm going to say it's a mild-bodied cigar. I will agree with my uh, colleague, it is a uh, tongue-numbing and lip-numbing. Um, and when you do swallow, you'll feel it go down your stomach. Um, I find this to be heavily in cedar. And, um, in my opinion, it's not La Hero. And uh, I highly recommend this if you haven't tried it. It is a good cigar. Um, as Aaron said, it is, you know, a very uh, interesting cigar. One of the weird cigars where I can taste it down in here. And usually I get no flavors down in here from smoking. It doesn't bind the saliva so well that when you swallow, it just goes down. This really needs something to drink with it just to wash that out. So, I don't know. To me, this is an extreme full body. Uh, are you getting a nicotine buzz? No, I didn't say it's necessarily high in nicotine. I said I'm it's getting low a nicotine buzz. Well, there. You got it high in nicotine for her. You got it high in uh, body for me. Not terribly high in flavor as the primary notes are cedar, um, but it is an interesting cigar. I do not know as I would buy this again, um, just because I kind of find it slightly offsetting to the the swallowing thing and having the flavors go down that way. It just doesn't happen with other cigars like this, not nearly on par. Uh, but it is an interesting cigar. Agreed. So with that said, please add and subscribe. Leave questions, comments, feedback, suggestions. If you smoke this and you agree or disagree, please uh, leave comments to that effect too. Just keep it nice is all we ask. And enjoy, enjoy every, every puff. puff.